Hey lovelies, today is a very heavy topic. I'm putting it out there straight away. This video is not monetized because I just don't think it's right to. I would be donating funds from whatever I earn from this video to uh, appropriate organizations. However, I don't earn enough for that, so I'm just not monetizing it at all. But as a heads up, we're on about predatory behavior, grooming, adult and child relationships, and DV. So I just want you to be prepared and I will of course have resources listed down below for you and do not worry next week the video will be a lot fluffier and a lot lighter. This has just been weighing on my chest a lot and so I have to make this video, I have to get this out because I've been very concerned with things that I've been seeing. Now it is no secret on this channel I defend people, I give people a very holistic view and I try and actually humanize people that have been victims of bad men in their lives or bad people around them and systems around them. Like that's what my entire Tragic Icon series is about and that started off with Priscilla Presley. Now we are just about to get Baz Luhrmann's movie about Elvis and his life and we know that Priscilla has signed off on this and we know that there's already been a screening to Elvis's family and they were crying and they said that it was so heartfelt and all of that good stuff but obviously in my Priscilla video I was pointing out the very problematic things that happened to her because the video was about her not about Elvis but about her <laughs> now I did indeed get a couple of things wrong in there and it's honestly it's okay please always feel free to correct me like we should all feel okay with being corrected if you get anything wrong so I just noted this down so she actually visited him in America in 1962 so that makes her 17 when she went for that two-week trip but they still did go around places together completely unsupervised and then in 1963 she lived with his father and stepmother at 18 with the knowledge that they would marry one day obviously Elvis and her would get married and she said it was a very natural progression into that way of life even though she was staying mostly at Graceland with Elvis at the time so they were still living together even though even though it was meant to be with his father and stepmother um so and that's it that's what I got wrong and like I said I'm okay to be corrected but that's what I got wrong but everything else in that video is still true like the thing still happened he was 24 and she was 14 when they first met now if you watch that video all the way through you will know that Priscilla does have this deep love and affection for Elvis but you also need to know that he started taking her out on dates when she was 14 years old and he was 24 and he was a superstar level uh, so in today's context that would be very similar to say if Harry Styles plucked one singular 14 year old out of a literal sea <laughs> of people that were gagging to be with him or Justin Bieber back in the day you know it's it's that level of hype and power you can not like we can't underestimate the amount of power and influence that Elvis Presley had still does have as I've seen from all of the vitriolic comments on that video you may understand why someone with that level of power would be able to kind of mold and change someone to be the way that they wanted them to be you can fully understand that a child at the age of 14 why they would be influenced by whatever their idol was telling them <laughs> You know, you can kind of understand why they'd want to change to be what that person wanted them to be, right? They're much more moldable at a young age, which is something that Elvis himself actually pointed out. Whilst I do understand that Elvis had a very hard life himself, at the same time we can't go really making those sorts of excuses when it comes to what actually went down. And the whole point of that video was to platform Priscilla and see things from her perspective and share her perspective, but people still can't cope with that and that is one of the worst things when it comes to stand culture, which we are seeing actually in live action today. I also just have to stress here how intimidating and scary it would have been for Priscilla to even come forward to begin with against literally the king, Elvis Presley, who so many people loved and held up on this ridiculously high pedestal and still do. There are still people to this very day that think that their relationship was absolutely fine because the footage is so beautiful. It looks so picturesque. But we actually know like that truth behind it as I stated in that video and the complete power imbalance but people are still on his side to this day despite all of the evidence that she's given. Now the question repeatedly comes up where are the parents? Where were her parents? How the hell could she go to these parties? Who was making sure that she kept her legs closed this whole time? My question is why aren't we expecting grown men to act like the adults? Why are we so willing to let people groom children because they're stars? This honestly archaic and Grimm's Brothers fairy tale view that parents should have a lock and key to make sure their daughter's locked up uh, before they get sold to, sorry, I mean married off to a man um, to make sure that their virtue is intact is... <sighs> 
is problematic to say the least. Because of course all of this is about keeping her purity in check. Now what is with this very incorrect view that men can't control themselves? Basically anybody other than cishet white male um, has to not only pander to them but also fear them. And also the expectation that parents should always be around brandishing a sword to stop the boys from being the boys that they are, which is a terrible message to raise children on. My whole question is why are we so comfortable with raising boys with this expectation that that they're too stupid to be able to control their behaviour. Now look, I've also made a whole other video, also unmonetized, about all of the terrible things that people have actually done, um, which I want you to watch the full thing of because it, uh, you'll miss the point otherwise. But here are just a few examples in particular when we're pertaining to this very issue. Melanie Griffith was 14. Don Johnson was 22. Their daughter is Dakota Johnson of Fifty Shades of Grey fame. Celine Dion was 12 when she met Rene Angelil. Sorry, I'm pronouncing that name incorrectly, but who do I care? He was 38 and went on to become her husband. Rick Springfield was in his 20s when he was dating Linda Blair when she was 15. Anthony Kiedis was 24 and the schoolgirl from this song was 14. But you know, she's got a song after her, so that makes it totally fine, right? Jerry Seinfeld was 39, dating Shoshana Longstein, who was 17. Jerry Lee Lewis married his child cousin. She was 13. Priscilla met Elvis when she was 14, and he was 24, and he started to groom her from then. And this is only a handful of the cases. There are many more that I will be talking about in my Almost Famous video, which will be coming up. I do not understand why people keep on trying to defend these stars for these particular actions. This gets used a lot for Priscilla, that they didn't have Charlie XCX until she was 21. Um... It always comes back to a girl's virtue as opposed to all of the many other terrible things that were actually happening. The problem is the power imbalance here with the grooming and also the fact that they were actually preying on younger girls because they're more moldable. Something which everybody knows because your brain isn't fully developed until you're 25. And you may be saying, oh but Bryony, Elvis was 24 when he spotted Priscilla so we can't hold him accountable. Um, he had an entire team around him that enabled a lot of this behaviour. And I'm sorry, if you're going to try telling me a 24 year old doesn't realise that being with a 14 year old is wrong, um, I don't know what to tell you. And honestly, in a lot of the cases that I just listed, Charlie XCX was indeed happening. So yes, that does mean the R word. That means grape, which I obviously cannot say here, was happening to these girls. And also, do not go telling me that things were different back then because this was even being called out at the time about these issues that were happening. We've seen in the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard case just how vile this mindset still is today. How people are relishing watching Johnny Depp act completely inappropriately in court because he knows that the fans love his reactions. How people are so willing to not believe a woman because it means that they can feel fine about all of the terrible derogatory, objectifying, awful things and harassment that they've done to other women by saying that they're overreacting a lot of the time. As I've spelled out so many times in my Tragic Icon series, this is all of the misogyny that exists in the world being pinpointed and focused on this one woman to be able to spew every single little hatred filled thing that people want to be able to say in live time. And you've got these body language experts, which is not a thing by the way, picking apart everything while she is literally having to relive actual traumatic events that happened in her life, including SA, um, where none of the protective measures are actually in place for her and this is being broadcast live for your entertainment. I'm on about the public mudslinging and the issues around that. Because you know who's seeing this? is all of the victims ever and they're also seeing how misogynistic the entire country in America is getting and globally. The rise of it is very scary which is exactly why I'm making this video. Please watch this video from Princess Weeks and this video from Legion Miller. I'll have them both linked in the description box for you down below. The victim who comes forward today is typically treated really badly, is not believed, or is threatened. And of course, that's even if they come forward at all. And you know what? If something happens in a workplace, it's actually the victim who gets penalised more than the perpetrator. Because the thing is, that the victim cannot talk about it afterwards. And if the man, the men, the people are powerful enough, they can stop you from being able to get a job. And this doesn't just happen with stars, like what happened with Harvey Weinstein and his awful impact. This happens to just regular, regular, everyday people just like you and me. 
it doesn't make the impacts of these things any less real and every single time that I or another victim has to go to a job interview you have to relive that exact moment you have to relive all of those traumatic times <laughs> in workplaces that you've had to leave because of SA or SH or whatever may have happened um, and you have to lie it pays more to have victims be silenced than to have troublemakers within your organization because of course the victims could ruin the company's whole reputation not the perpetrators the victims the onus is still on the victim to provide the burden of proof to provide every single scrap of evidence and um and i'm not saying that false allegations don't happen what i'm saying is the system is built in such a way to humiliate a victim and it is just more beneficial overall to silence them. Me Too happened in 2017 and five years later we're still not past this point. We're still not past poking holes in people's defences. We're still not past the purity check for victims. We're still not past the slut shaming of victims. And then of course you have people saying that mistakes happen so you should give the perpetrator the people that have done horrific things a second chance. Now I do believe that people can learn, change and grow. But I also believe that victims still get left out in the cold more often than not. Stan culture and fan culture that makes people only think highly of an idol because they see it as a reflection on themselves to endorse someone like this. And when you find out that your fave might have flaws, oh god no, because then that's a reflection on me because I'm a good person and I endorse them. So that can't be true. Not to my fave. So of course, naturally, you'll defend them. I've seen it happen a lot in my Priscilla video and we're only going to see more of this. And it'll happen more and more until we stop putting people on pedestals. Until we have this uncomfortable reckoning within ourselves that society hasn't actually moved on that far, that patriarchal values are staunchly protected to keep women, trans and non-binary lovelers in a space of fear and control. We will keep seeing this message come up again in political spaces again and again. And sadly this is on a repeating loop these days. Now I've already got a whole video on femphobia which goes into more of these details which I will have linked down below for you of course. But the thing that I really want to end on is something that I say time and again. We weren't there. We don't know what each individual person on this planet has actually dealt with and what they're going through and their own trauma. We don't know anything other than what victims are brave enough to share with us. And the victims are the ones that are put on trial more than the perpetrators. This power balance that exists and is staunchly protected means that doubt will always be there and will always shine on that victim. I do worry a lot about meme culture and how people are trying to get their 15 seconds of fame on TikTok or whatever by memeing every possible thing that is going on about not just this case but so many things that are actually happening in people's lives like actual traumatic events by making it into entertainment and content instead of actually just pausing to think like huh is this something that I should joke about? Because there is this mentality that everything can be a joke. Now look, I have used a lot of dark humour in my life to get through the terrible things that I've dealt with. Trust me, I understand it. But when you're making jokes about other people's trauma, there comes a time for a bit of a pause, is all I'm saying here. I don't personally think it's right with a lot of these things that I've been seeing going on. Because honestly it worries me a lot and it makes me feel like victims are just going to be more and more silenced by this. I just really had to get this off my chest because the Elvis movie is coming out very very soon and we're going to be seeing all of these wonderful praises about this movie and how raw it is and how emotional it is and all that other stuff. Um, but the thing is that because Priscilla also endorses it because her survivor mindset has taken her down a different path where she's actually infatuated with the person that did the things. Um, Oh God, it just makes me worry that we're going to keep on seeing this behaviour get defended time and again and it absolutely shouldn't be. I've had someone say in my comments that Priscilla wouldn't be famous if it wasn't for Elvis. There is no Priscilla Presley without Elvis Presley. And honestly, <clears throat> I would much rather for that 14 year old girl to have been able to lead a normal life and not have to go through what she did with the grooming, with everything that she went through. I would much rather her to have not been famous <laughs> by proxy because of him and have people still sling mud at her today. I would much rather that not happen. I, what makes someone think that that is like the right mindset to have? Like what kind of world are we living in that people are thinking that that's the right mindset? My god. Anyway, I really do appreciate you watching this and even if this has only helped one person feel like they're not alone because 
I definitely am worried about the things that I'm seeing unfold online and it is scary seeing the stuff that's happening, it genuinely is. And if this has got you a bit rattled, a bit triggered, like I said, there are resources in the description box down below. I want people to feel like happy and safe after this, so I'll be ending on a very nice clip of kittens or something or foxes or something like that because I never want anyone's day to be bad, but I just, I had to get this off my chest because this has been really weighing down on me and when I was writing this I was trying not to cry. <laughs> Next week I'm going to be talking about the TV show Popular, uh, the fever dream of a show that it was and uh, it is available on YouTube for free if you want to watch it. That's what I'll be talking about instead of Dawson's Creek because you can't watch that anywhere now. Um, so yes, you can get prepared or you can just join along next week and have fun with that. Like I said, need something light and fluffy, you do as well. Get some sunshine, take care of yourselves. I really do appreciate it. Subscribe if you like this, give it a like, but make sure to do something happy and nice for yourself. And you're not alone, you're really not. Take care, lovelies. Bye.